Every time I've been on a cruise, I've seen people breaking rules or doing something that's just stupid. And it makes me wonder if that's what they're doing where everybody can see, what are they doing in the privacy of their own cabin? The thing is, oftentimes people don't even know they're making these mistakes. But I'm gonna fix that today. Today's video, I'm gonna give you 15 things that you should never do in your cruise cabin that could cause you embarrassment, cost you money, or worse, get you banned from the cruise line for life. And stick around till the end where I'm going to share what I did on my last cruise that was breaking the rules. Let's start with the nitty gritty. I went just a month ago on a cruise with my in-laws and one afternoon, the topic of conversation turned to toilets. I know, I know, toilets, but toilets on ships are very different from toilets on land. Toilets on ships are really loud as they whoosh away the contents. And this is because they use a vacuum technology which is, reduces the amount of water needed when you flush, but it can be very startling for new cruisers and for children. What is the part you should never do? These toilets can't handle any kind of feminine products. They can't handle wipes of any kind, even flushable kind. They cannot handle toilet paper from home, even though it's so much softer. They can't handle any kind of paper towels and they cannot handle any cotton swabs. This is a big deal because if your toilet gets blocked, it affects the toilets around you because they're all connected. And that could lead to flooding, which is no good. Don't put anything other than human waste and the toilet paper they give you into the toilet. Before we leave the bathroom, let's talk about the second thing on our list. And that is when you're taking a shower, it's a good idea to put out your do not disturb sign. Or if there's a light, some, some cruise ships have like a light that you turn on that says do not disturb. This isn't for other guests. This is for your cabin attendant because they'll knock once and then they come right into your cabin. They may be coming to turn down the bed or drop off your newsletter. The last thing you want is to be caught buck naked coming out of your shower by your cabin attendant. No good. Speaking of buck naked, you do not want to be walking around in your birthday suit if your ship is coming into port or is in port. Other cruise lines, their ships park awfully close. Think about it. What if people have binoculars? They're going to be looking for the people with traits open. You don't want to be stuck in that embarrassing position not good well it could be good if you're on the other side binoculars and you're seeing some you like time to leave the bathroom and let's go out onto the balcony where a whole new set of missteps awaits some obvious ones include climbing on the railing sitting on the railing one woman she was sitting on the railing with her phone getting video for her instagram feed well guess what she was banned for life and then a really sad one is, you know, some people think it's a good idea to jump off the ship. So you're in port, maybe it doesn't look that far away. This one video I saw, these kids, young men, were egging this guy on and he jumped. He jumped off, he did survive. However, he was damaged for life and he and all of his buddies were banned from the cruise line for life. And it should go without saying that children should never be left unattended out on the balcony. And it's a really good idea to keep the furniture away from the railing so there's no invitation to climb. Another somewhat controversial one is smoking. You're not allowed to smoke on your balcony or in your cabin. There are a few cruise lines out of Europe that do allow smoking, but all the lines that I'm going on and probably you're going on, you're not allowed to smoke. And if you do, and you'll get caught because you'll be able to smell it, then you'll get a fine. So just best to avoid it. You can smoke in, on the cruise ship in designated smoking areas. You might think hanging your wet swimsuit or your towel is a good idea on the balcony. It's not a good idea. And the reason why is, it gets really windy out there and it'll just fly off into the ocean. And think about it, it could look convincing where somebody up on the bridge would think it's a man overboard. And that is no good. Better is to bring some kind of clips that you can clip them 
The bathrooms have a retractable clothesline, so you can just clip them to that, or you can bring magnet hooks. Magnet hooks are like your best friend. The cabin walls are metal, so the magnet hooks hook on, and then you could just hang your swing suit to dry. Here's another one that shouldn't have to be said, and that is feeding the birds off your balcony. One woman commented that a bird, her balcony doors open, a seagull flew right in and sat on her bed and poop, not good. If you bring a portable speaker, you wanna make sure you keep the music down because you know the music travels, the walls are thin, especially on the balcony. You wanna keep it down whether you're inside your cabin or out on the balcony. And that just makes me think also about the volume on your television or the volume of your voices, because they do carry. Which brings me to my next point. You may be thinking, oh, it'd be fun to sunbathe in the nude on your balcony or to get frisky on the balcony. Now, there are gaps between the balconies. People can look in and see you. I even heard of a story of a couple. They were having fun when in port. People on land saw them, the officials saw them. They came up, they arrested them and hauled them off to jail. And the ship sailed away without them. This is not good. Another viral cruise news story happened back in March on Royal Caribbean's Allure of the Seas. This couple thought it'd be a good idea to bring their mattress out on the balcony when they were Coco K. Jeez, people. Get a cabana. This is not good. Here's a more common balcony mistake that won't make the evening news and just about everyone will make it. And that is when the balcony door is open, you do not want to open your cabin door. It causes a wind tunnel that whooshes through your room, your cabin, and can cause serious damage because the door can slam. I heard of one account where somebody even lost the tip of their finger. That is not good. Let's step inside now. So you want to look best for your formal night. So you're thinking I'm going to bring an iron to iron out the wrinkles. Think again. You cannot bring anything with a heating out element like an iron or a steamer. You also can't bring things like baby bottle warmers or tea kettles. Those are just not allowed on the ship and they will be confiscated. And what that causes is your luggage to be delayed getting to your room. You'll be able to get it back at the end of the cruise, but just don't pack it in the first place. Better to get rid of wrinkles, just spray them with a wrinkle release or water or hang them in the shower and the steam will let the wrinkles just kind of hang out. I do find it very interesting, but I'm happy about it. They do allow you to bring blow dryers, though most cruise lines have one available, so you don't need to bring it. You can also bring your curling irons and your flat irons or any other hair styling tools. Going along with all those devices, you might think it's a good idea to bring a surge protected power bar to plug in all your blow dryers, things like that. No. You are not allowed to bring a surge protected power bar on the ship. It's a fire hazard. So instead, you can bring things like this. You get more outlets that way. Cruise ships don't have a lot of outlets, so it's a really good idea. This is one essential that I would always bring. And this one has for three plugs and two USBs. Here's another great one you can plug in. This one has for USBs and USCs. I'll leave links below. I have a tip for you on how to get power next to your bed if there's no plug or USBs there. But before I do, I ask you if you have not yet subscribed to this channel to subscribe and hit that like button on your way out. Here's the tip. If you're on a ship that does not have a USB or power next to the bed, just bring a power bank, plug that in, plug your phone into that next to the bed. Another good tip is Bring some Ziploc baggies so that you can grab a few cookies in the buffet and bring them back to your cabin. <laughs> you might think, I have a drink package, so the mini bar is included, right? Nope, and that would be a mistake. Items from that mini bar, they cost you a pretty penny. So here's a tip. 
On that very first day when you meet your room steward, ask them to empty out that mini fridge and that way you'll have more room if you brought any of the allotted items onto the cruise ship with you. And while talking to your room steward, ask what they would like you to do with your room service dishes. Do they want you to leave them out in the hall? I personally just hate that. I hate having to maneuver around dirty dishes with congealing eggs on them. What do you think you should do with room service dishes? Leave a comment below. And that leads me to the mistake that I made that I'm guessing many cruisers make. And that is I left devices charging in the room when I wasn't in there. That is not allowed. It's a fire hazard. And if the room steward comes in and sees it, it will just unplug it. Mistakes happen. But if you want to find out how to avoid mistakes that Alaskan cruisers make, watch this video next. Happy sailing!